The Faith at Work movement is on a cusp, destined for great things. God uses people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of professions to advance His kingdom. Work is a crucible that God uses to refine us. Everybody's work matters to God. The only thing that really brings lasting change is the gospel of Jesus Christ applied to every area of life. Leadership is people who can take other people's pain and turn it into passion. Are you overwhelmed by Jesus Christ? I was very nervous when I sat down to have breakfast with Dave. I was a new pastor at Irvine Presbyterian Church in Southern California. And I was wanting to get to know the folk in my church better, having a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with them. But my meeting with Dave made me nervous because he was rather a legend in our congregation. And he was a legend because he was literally the guy who invented Lexus for Toyota. And he was running that luxury car division of Toyota when I was going to sit down with him for breakfast. Dave was an experienced marketplace marvel. I was an inexperienced young pastor. I was nervous. But the breakfast went well. Dave was gracious and supportive. He did talk about the excitement in, in creating Lexus. He talked about the challenges of working in a, in a vast multinational corporation. Along the way, I asked Dave how his faith made a difference in his work. And I think I probably expected him to talk about being moral in the workplace. But what he said surprised me. He said, I pray about every aspect of my work every day. On my way to work, I pray. I pray for our employees, for our office staff, our manufacturers, our dealers. I pray for our customers. I pray for our distribution system. And he went on and on telling me how he prayed each morning on his way to work. I was really surprised. It never would have occurred to me that the guy running Lexus was praying about it every day which in retrospect may have something to do with the fact that they were making such great cars, <laughs> right? But after that meeting, as I reflected upon it, I realized that I as a pastor needed help from Dave and others like him. I needed, I needed to learn about the business world in ways that I had no conception. I needed to learn how my people were already working and living out their faith in the workplace. Out of that breakfast, I came away with a conviction that I have held throughout my professional life. And it's really that conviction I want to share with you today. It's quite simple, really. It's this. If pastors are going to help workplace Christians live their faith at work, then pastors need help from workplace Christians. It's really that simple. If pastors are going to help workplace Christians live their faith at work, then pastors need help from workplace Christians. The first kind of help that I needed was knowledge. I needed knowledge of the workplace. I needed knowledge of corporate life and culture. I needed to listen to the people in my congregation and learn what it was like to work in a, in a cubicle or a big box store or a startup or a Fortune 500 company. I needed to learn what it was like to lose a job or not even have enough income to support a family. I needed to learn about failures and successes, about frustrations and opportunities about firings and promotions. I, I needed to learn how the people in my church were already living their faith each day at work. I needed knowledge. Now, often at about this time in the conversation about what pastors need from workplace people, somebody will say, they need to learn how to run the church as a business. When is somebody going to teach pastors about spreadsheets and budgets and HR and management and marketing? And that's a good question, but that really isn't our question here. We're not talking about how pastors run churches as business. 
We're talking about how pastors can help their people live their faith in the workplace. And I'd suggest that that requires knowledge, a deep understanding of the experience of their people. Plus, I would add, having recently written a commentary on Ephesians, that according to Ephesians 4, the church is the body of Christ in which every part is essential. And if you think about it, pastors really don't have to master all the business stuff because they're going to have in their congregation some experts in business who ought to come alongside and lead along with them. And that points, I believe, to the second thing that pastors need. Pastors need help from business folk if pastors are going to lead them to live out their faith in the workplace. And the second kind of help that pastors need is partnership. They need partners in the work. Now, that makes lots of practical sense, doesn't it? If churches are going to do things to help workplace Christians live out their faith, it makes sense that you would get leadership and wisdom from workplace people as you plan those programs in order to be relevant. But the partnership between pastors and workplace Christians also makes theological sense. Again, Ephesians 4 tells us that the church is a body in which every part matters. Pastors are to be equipping the members of the church for their ministry. Ephesians makes it clear that that ministry is not just in the gathering of the church, but as the church scatters throughout the world, including the marketplace. Pastors need partners who understand that they are ministers of Jesus Christ, that they're essential members of Christ's church, and that they are essential for the mission of the church of Christ in the world. I'm deeply committed to helping forge those kinds of partnerships between pastors and their churches, between pastors and marketplace people and their churches. In fact, that's most of what I do these days as executive director of the Max Dupree Center for Leadership at Fuller Seminary. The centerpiece of our work is called Church and Marketplace. And it is simply a network of marketplace leaders helping their churches become incubators of faith and work discipleship. Now, as you're hearing that, you may be saying, well, if it's a network of marketplace leaders, what happened to the pastors? <laughs> and the truth is they're all over in church and marketplace because we have seen and we all have learned that if churches are really going to do this work of integrating faith and work, there has to be deep collaboration between the church staff and the members and the congregants, between pastors and workplace leaders. I think you may also know that we already have some excellent organizations doing the work of helping pastors help their churches get going in this mission. Made to Flourish is obviously the most obvious and, and really exciting example of where this is happening. Made to Flourish is building a network of pastors who are committed to helping their churches bridge that divide between Sunday faith and Monday work. Church and marketplace is very much the, the mirror image of made to flourish in that we are working from the marketplace side on the same kinds of things that made to flourish is working from the pastor side. And in the end, we need both together if it's going to work. Pastors need partnership with their workplace Christians if pastors are going to help workplace Christians live their faith at work. So pastors need knowledge and pastors need partnership. Is there anything else? Have we left something out? Well, I think there's one other thing for sure. And it's easy to overlook it. It's what I would call friendship. I believe that pastors need friendship with marketplace leaders. Now, I realize that in some conversations, and some of you here today are pastors, you know that people will say, pastors can never have best friends in their church. And 
I get that, but that's not really the argument I'm wanting to engage today. I, I, I'm not necessarily, not, not necessarily talking about best friendship, but friendship. I'm talking about pastors and the folk from their church hanging out together, taking their kids to the park, going to the ball game, having dinner together, getting to know each other, sharing life together. Now, surely in the context of that kind of friendship, there will be strategic benefit. Pastors will learn about workplaces. Pastors and workplace Christians who are friends will share their vision and their dreams, and there will probably be great marketplace ministries that grow out of that for churches. But really, the friendship need that pastors have goes deeper than the strategic. It's, it's really a matter of the heart. It's a matter of sharing deeply in Christ with brothers and sisters, being the body of Christ, being the community of God's people that we heard about earlier. Let me cite just one example from my time as pastor at Irvine Press. And I think of a man named Jim who became a friend. That friendship began as I was doing my pastoral duty. His father-in-law had died. I met with the family because I was going to perform the memorial service. But out of that beginning grew a friendship. As Jim and I would have coffee together, I'd go visit him in his workplace. Uh, sometimes we'd have dinner with our wives. and I enjoyed his company. I think he enjoyed mine. Now, absolutely in those conversations, I learned a ton about work that helped me be a better pastor. And as Jim and I would talk about our dreams, we ended up partnering in a, a wide array of ministries, both within the church and in the workplace. But the relationship I had with Jim was more than functional or strategic. In my fifth year in the Irvine Church, we went through a very uh, difficult personnel crisis. I can't say much about the details, but I'm sure many of you understand what I'm talking about. It was one of those things that was so discouraging to me. And I, I really began to question whether I was the right pastor for that church. And frankly, I began to question whether I should have been a pastor at all. Was I called to do this? And one day in the middle of the crisis, Jim called me up. He said, hey, how about if we have coffee this afternoon? He talks kind of fast. He said, how about if we have coffee this afternoon? I said, sure, it'd be great. So we met at a coffee joint, and I figured we were just going to shoot the breeze for a while. But Jim said, well, I didn't call you here just to talk. I have an agenda. You know, when you're in a crisis, you get a little nervous about that language. But he said, <laughs> he said I know you're going through a really hard time at church. And I know you're very discouraged. And, and, I, and I feel bad for that but I'm not really here to sympathize. <laughs> I'm here to tell you what a great job you're doing as pastor of this church. And I want to tell you ways that God is at work because of your leadership here. And over the next 10 minutes, that's what he did. And he pointed to different things he saw in the life of the church, connecting that back into my leadership. He gave me an amazing and a wonderful gift that day. Not just the gift of, of encouragement, but the gift of perspective. He allowed me to step back from the crisis and, and see more clearly what was going on. His marketplace practicality was exactly what I needed from a friend that day. And I'm very grateful. What do pastors need from marketplace leaders? I believe that if pastors are going to help workplace Christians live their faith at work, then pastors need help from workplace Christians. There are so many other things we could talk about. We could talk about prayer. We could talk about workplace folk becoming leaders in the church. We could talk about introductions into the business community. But I am convinced that if churches are going to become incubators of faith work integration, incubators of whole life discipleship. 
And if pastors are going to help workplace Christians live their faith at work, then pastors do need the help of workplace Christians. They need knowledge, they need partnership, and they need friendship. Thank you.